Welcome to the You Can Heal Your Life podcast. This is Hey House author Kyle Gray. So excited to be here today. If we've never been formally introduced to each other, uh, you might know some of my books such as Raise Your Vibration, Angel Prayers and Angel Numbers. And I'm super thrilled to be here today because I've been invited to do an interview from one of the newer He House authors, but someone I've known for quite some time. This guy is a bona fide Viking and his name is Richard Lister, an international mentor and author of three books, including The Foundational Runes Made, e Made Easy and the groundbreaking The Book of Runic Astrology coming out in September 23. His meditations and classes have helped his audience connect to their power through myths and meditation, bringing a contemporary connection to the ancient. And one of the most exciting things for me doing this podcast with you today is Rich is someone I've known, you know, throughout my journey as an author, but someone I've also consulted and asked for support and someone I've also had the opportunity to break an arrow with my neck with. Uh, so amazing to have you here. Thank you for joining us, Rich. It's an absolute honor. Thank you so much for hosting. You're an amazing human being. Thank you for sharing your energy. Oh, great. And, you know, today we're here to really kind of dive into the topic of runes and connecting with this Norse wisdom. But before we get to that, you're a real Viking, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've got sport on that, so I've got a helmet and chain <laughs> Geeky, but yes, I do have the Vikingness going on. And if we're going to get super geeky, my lineage goes back through to like the lost um, long stride in Normandy back in like the 1066 and even further back down into northern Norway. So yeah, we've got the, got the kind of Norwegian there. Yeah, proper Viking roots in there. And um, the other cool thing about your approach to spirituality is you also work and as a professional nurse, right? You're a nurse practitioner. I was an um, A and E nurse for ten years, bouncing around various um, hospitals, and I got a really deep grounding in the modern medicine spectrum of things. And I also am quite passionate and uh, interested in the more metaphysical ways of doing things, holistic ways of doing things. And I believe these two modalities meet really well together because modern medicine's great if you get hit by a car or you have a heart attack, it's not so good six months down the line because it's um, it's dealing with chronic things um, the modern medicine is not so good at. So that's where we have to start looking at ancestral medicine and healing through the more metaphysical, the more um, spiritual, the shamanic, the whatever word you want to put to that way of doing things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You hit by a car, break you on, go to the emergency room. If you um, six months down the line, you still need something helping with that, let's have a look at other, other options. Yeah, because I have this fond memory of being in uh, Glastonbury a few years ago with my friend Megan Watterson, mm. and I had a, a bit of a sore AC joint from, you know, all years of injuries and stuff. And I remember you just going to your car and getting all these uh, tools and things out and cupping and uh, hands-on healing. And I remember it just... The ease that you created in my shoulder in a very short space of time, it was so cool. I think that's part of what I've been to offer in the universe is helping people feel at ease within themselves, within their experience of their bodies and their experience of this time here right now. Not floating off somewhere else, but being here right now. Be here now is what I want you to be. Love it. So let's get into this. Um, you becoming this expert in runes. Where did your journey begin with, you know, Norse mythology, Norse spirituality? I, I've always loved myth and story, and I was raised on the Greek myths and the Roman myths of Zeus and Olympus. Um, when I went to university and may have drunk my way through university, I discovered heathen paganism. And I ended up um, at a camp in the middle of the New Forest with a bunch of other pagans and maybe imbibing heavily of the local mead. Well, gloss over that. And I remember distinctly at stupid o'clock in the morning standing in front of the fire. And I thought I was there for seconds, but apparently I was there for freaking ages. 
and this one-eyed figure appeared in the flames to me and told me to go and learn stuff and go and learn to be better and yeah. I'm good at doing what I'm told so that's what I did and I went off and learned stuff I learned um, nursing I learned um, Ayurveda yoga um, cupping all these weird and wonderful modalities that include citalopram and um, setting a broken bone, but also include a, a sage ceremony, also include cupping, also inclu include calling back people's parts of people's souls from trauma and TRE and all that's fun and exciting things. And part of that was runes. And I love myth. I love secret hidden things. I love stories. I love how things work together through humans' ability to interpret the world around them. And I think runes do this in a really fun way because unlike a lot of ways of interpreting uh, spirituality, they kind of stopped dead in about the 13th, 14th century because of Teutonic um, Crusades where all the practitioners were literally burned at the stake, which is what it is. It happened. We got all this stuff was buried um, a lot of the warriors moved south to Mikulgard or in Istanbul, Constantinople, to become the Varengian Guard. Um, the people who didn't survive or were, were converted forcefully to Christianity. And the, the myth and the story was lost by the people who actually practiced it. And it kind of stayed lost, apart from the occasional scratches or a farmer would unearth a stone covered in these strange, weird shapes. Um, Iceland did a good job of holding on to it just for a bit longer because they're well stubborn. But um, the, the rules around trading with pagans or people who weren't Christian um, sort of put pay to humans practicing that way. And then in the 1980s, 1990s, people started to rediscover this new age spirituality. And the myths and stories were starting to be translated from Icelandic or Old Norse or um danish into or, or indeed old english into languages that we speak nowadays so people can start to tell the stories again and then i say i discovered the runes uh, i was taught by a teacher um in the early 2000s and she led me down the path of the anglo-saxon runes and um, if you don't know anglo-saxons well let's say let's say saxons were people who lived in the um, in britain in about fourth to eighth century and they came from North Germany and uh, southern Norway. And um, when they migrated in like the, uh, the fourth century, when Rome gave up and went home, and these people made their own place here in the UK, and they had their own language, their own rune set. And from the Anglo-Saxon runes, I learned the, El learned the Elder Thurthark, which is a bit of an older version. Hmm. And the Elder Thurthark is one that fits quite nicely with an Anglophone language. So the runes sounds fit with English quite nicely. Yeah. So as do the Anglo-Saxon, but that's well complicated. The um, Elder Furthark fits, and this is why I dived headfirst into the Elder Furthark, because it's something that can be picked up easily. You can write your name in it with very, with very, um, very much ease, and you can um, use it for what it was originally designed for, which is a letter for bed, but you can also use it for divining, for spell work, stabs, um, creating energy, and... Um, nexus points within the old world because they all have this charged energy from the stories that are associated with each rune because each four runes has a story associated with it so before we jump into this i think if if because i know a little bit about runes but say someone just landed on this podcast right now and they're like what are they talking about what is a rune so a rune is a sigil as a series of marks often found in stone across Scandinavia. In the UK, there's found um, on stones up north, and it's also found uh, in carved into metalwork, into swords, into um, weaving swords, into, into bones that were found in graves. It's found on rings. And these um, are shapes, I don't know if you, um, you can see them, that can be anything. And this is Gibo, this is an X shape. Yeah, that means um, a gift or um, a giving energy. And they're, they're very simple um, geometric designs because if you're carving something in stone, it has to be quite straight lines. It's really hard. Straight lines, right. It's quite hard to do circles unless you're going to spend lots of patience doing it. 
And these runes are primarily an alphabet, but they also hold a lot of story and myth along with them. And this is how we can start to feel into the runes as a modality for now, as we reconstruct, recreate, and redesign our interactions with this very old um, key. Yeah. So I see you've got a set of runes there in card format. But um, so, you know, like for people who are maybe listening right now, this is like a tool that you can get in uh, all different shapes and sizes and forms. You know, like wooden ones, you can get metal ones. Ones a lot. They're quite they're harder to have on screen. That's why I, yeah. I've got the um, metal ones on screen. Sorry, I was plugged in. Yeah. There we go. Um, and so I, I love making rune stones. I use um, native woods to cook up my off, but there's nothing wrong with going to your local bookstore, metaphysical store, and finding a set that's um, made out of crystal that suits you, or resin ones that are beautiful and shiny and sparkly, or going to the beach and making your own set from stones you find there. It's, runes are made how you want to be made. So there's nothing, there's no limits on what you can do with them and how you create them. And so, is it rune? You can go for a rune reading, for example, right? You can go and see someone who specialises in oracle cards, angel cards. You can also get people who specialise in runes. What makes that experience different to say, you know, an angel reading? I think the tool set, the, the skill set of the reader is similar because you're connecting to something bigger than oneself. Ooh. Um, in the in my worldview, in the Nordic ancient Nordic worldview, we're looking at connecting to the weird, spelt W Y R D, which is like a web of interconnecting energy. We might call it quantum now, yeah. And this these threads pull on each other. So right now, um, my thread and Carl's thread are inter- entwined because we're connected, talking to each other. Um, and what runes do? They can they attach themselves like magnets, or if you're as old as I am, fuzzy felt to energies that are vibrating with their story. So for instance, right now, we could draw, we could draw, and we, I did that one just now, the Gibo rune, and the energy right now is also Birkenan, which is the B shape, again, straight lines. And that's a rune of rebirth, rediscovering, and resilience in the world. And so hopefully that energy is coming through for you guys as you're listening to this, that um, sense of vibrational energy from the cosmos that is coming to you right now that's being able to cope and weather the storm and move forward after you've done so Mm. and i think a lot of people are getting super excited about north uh, northern kind of teachings right now like tv shows like vikings um the last kingdom coming on tv you know you know i was super obsessed i've still got the man bun to prove it you know actually <laughs> um, so I think this is a super exciting time for people rediscovering more ancient wisdom schools, and you know we're talking about New Age earlier on, but really this is old age, isn't it? Yeah, I think this is a a a, a patterning that's come from an ancient, almost extinct lineage of people of humans, and it's it's, it's within us that we can connect to this older vibe that's coming back that we're needing to connect back to who we are in this experience of the world yes we're needing who we are um, to connect back to provide context of who we are because especially people who are dispersed from where they were born or where they their roots are i mean we, we struggle to find connection to ourselves in this space and this is why oracle cards this is why tarot this is why runes call to people because it helps us find connection um which is greater than ourselves without having to subscribe to one idea, one one ideology or one part in the world, I feel. And, you know, I think what's so important about your work is, especially the Ruins Made Easy book, is you are helping people realize that this is accessible for everyone. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah, completely. Um, I think Ruins work in a very simplistic way because there's only, quote unquote, 24 of them. You don't need to memorize 72 tarot cards. You don't need to memorize 42 oracle cards. Um, you can draw them from your pouch of a pouch of runes. You can draw them from your rune deck. You can draw them from your bag of runes and know that the X one is Gibo, the gift. The I one is Ice, Ice as the, um, the illusion. And 
it's a very, very simplistic way of looking at things because runes didn't evolve. Tarot's got um, seven, eight hundred years more evolution than runes have. Oracle cards have got the same amount more evolution than runes have. Runes, yeah. So we're now, right now, creating how we interact with Viking um, Nordic runes in a way that fits for the 21st century and how we experience that through the lens of Instagram, TikTok, um, podcasts, YouTube, and how does um, the idea of the oryx, the strength of a primordial creature, manifest now? Is it like a, a JCB or an Earth Mover? Is it like a tank? Is it like a massive articulated lorry? Or is it your stubbornness not to conform in a way that hurts your experience of life? And all these different ways we can look at how very primitive con uh, constructs apply to our world right now is something that I think is really fun. Yeah. I think also what's super cool about the runes is um, you can't really draw a tarot card unless you're artistically, you know, gifted. And I think with the, the runes, you know, they're straight line format. And so, I, you know, like I remember when I was dabbling as a teenager, um, you know, like, I wanted growth, so I'd use this rune, and I would want, um, you know, all different things, and I would, you'd be able to create these sigils using the different lines of a rune and put it on a candle and then light it to kind of set this intention. There's a, an accessibility thing. Completely, because one of the best things about runes is that they're not um, a mystical connective thing, just that. They're also an alphabet. Like in the Hagia Sophia in Turkey, there is a uh, piece of marble on one of the balconies that says Halfdan was here, carved in runes. So you know, and the, even a bored warrior who's guarding a noble can carve his name 800 years ago and still be remembered. It's how someone can um, scratch Bjorn made this on a cone bone that was found in a bog in Norway. Mm. Um, and also bring in the ideas of um, healing, ideas of connection, ideas of using your voice to bring power and might to your world through these very angular sigils that are simple to do and primitively easy to do. And, you know, based on, because I don't know too much about runes, even though I do have a rune deck, but the um, each of the, the runes also have like a kind of over-guiding spirit, right? They've all got a, an essence, like, you know, um, algas, for example. Yes, um, so the Anglo-Saxons had poems for each of their runes, and that's what used to inform the um, runes that we were using the Elder Firth are. Yeah, and these um, Anglo-Saxon poems are old. They're like um, made in the year 850-ish. But they hark back to an earlier time. And these runes, these poems, these stories that go with the runes um, bring this calm resonance, this energetic vibration into the runes. So while well, I, I tell you that the Gibo, the Axe rune, it means gift, but it had a bit of worry, a poem that goes with it that tells you how you build reputation as the ring giver, how a lord or lady would give their followers um, rewards and gifts for just for being their followers. And that's how reputation was built. That's how loyalty was built back in the day. Um, and when you look at Theo, which is the rune of abundance, it's, it's, it's got horns like cat. Because your cat was literally dollar bills back then. So if you had a cow, it was worth a sword. If you had 10 cows, it was worth a chain, worth um, a suit of chain. We're all is as you as you spoke of earlier is a rune that looks like um three fingers in the sky and it's yeah. a rune, spiky um thorn-like um vegetation that you'd put around your um, homestead to keep out the wolf keep out the invader it's a boundary rune to keep you safe to find i like that uh, it's a very, and these are these are concepts that are both ancient so abundance is an ancient concept you need abundance now this will be recording this at the beginning at the end of september and so we need to bring the harvest in. We need to make sure we've got abundance now to store for the cold winter. We also need to recognize that we still need runes like Iowaz, which is the friendship, the community rune of horses and trust and companionship because we need to be able to weather the storm. We need to be able to work together to harvest. We need to be able to work together to fight the invader or indeed just exist in our world. So these ancient concepts apply now. 
given ways that um, our sociology has adapted and overcome and to become what we have now, if that makes sense. I said random words there, but it kind of makes sense. It does make sense. And, you know, um, we're in a really cool time because you've also combined the power of runes with astrology. Yeah. Uh, so, like, take us towards that, like, runic astrology. What is that? And, you know, how can we experience it? Runic astrology, I think, is fun because I have um, a disconnect with the ancient Greek and ancient Roman um cosmology i i much prefer the mythology and the stories of the ancient norse mm. and the uh way that astrology has evolved over the millennia from like like from the middle of mesopotamia which is what 3000 bc all the way through to now is going to meet a very evolved and comprehensive system that we've put on these um greco-roman gods mm -hmm. Rune Castrolli doesn't um, replace that. It adds another filter on top of it. It brings the myth and story of the North, of the ancient Norse peoples, to your astrology. So I call it a star path, and um, astrology calls it a birth chart. And if you have a star path laid out, you can follow that to find out where your success and your victory lies in life. So for me, my sun, my Suna, Suna is the goddess of the sun, mm -hmm. Wunyo, which is the rune of bliss and doing the work to to bring bliss and contentment, and that's something I hope I can bring to people. Do you mind if I share yours? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So you use it. Tear wise, yeah, I've I've, I've got you start, Carl. <laughs> that's cool. Um, Tear, your um focus is Tear wise, and Tear wise is the rune of um the Tear, the god of war, the god of direct act. Oh, is that the arrow? The arrow, yeah, yeah. The Tiwaz is the rune of doing the right thing, not necessarily what's legally right, but what's morally right for you at any one time. So I suggest that your um, connection to the world is, is accomplished by you acting how you see fit and making sure it works for you. And if it works for you, therefore it will work for everyone else because you're the paragon in this. As Tear stood up and showed himself to be the right action in the myth, he had his arm bitten off because he wouldn't break his word. And that's something that I, I see in you is that you stand you stand up in front of people and show them the way and show them the your action, especially with your Kundalini practice, especially with um, your connection process with the angels. You show people how to be better because you uh, manifest that and show that within yourself. And that's on your sooner route, your sun path. And how do you work that out? How do you? That, this is super fascinating. How do you get the? The sun rune, how do you get there? So um, the, the 24 runes in this system and there's 12 um, astrology signs. And the um, I've started the first arc from Feyu, which is nominally the first rune. And that starts on the summer solstice. Right. And I, I normalize that to be the 21st of June because um, it's that give or take. And so right. every few weeks, the runes rotate along the sequence for 20 oh got it so you put it together like that yeah so um if you're born on 21st of june you'd be your feyu sons if you're born in january you'll be um the beginning of january you'll be tiwaz the end of january you'll be birkenan for me i'm born in october so i'm a wunyo my wife is hagalaz so she would be a scorpio and um in the room of course she's a scorpio <laughs> hagalaz is the hailstorm that flattens and destroys everything so again, that fits Lisa really well because she will go in, mess stuff up and walk away. And that's the Hagar's energy. And so, if anyone doesn't know your wife, she's the famous author of Witch, Lisa Lister, and many others. So Sorcery's just come out and had Rune Deck is out. Oh no, sorry, Card Deck is out as well. Yeah. Yeah, Rune Astrology um, brings another layer of interpretation on top of classic astrology. And it what brings one that has the gods of the north as the planetary bodies, same as the gods of um, the Greeks and the Romans are the planetary bodies. So Mercury is Odin because Odin uses his mouth and communicates and moves really fast and looks around and sees everything. Venus is Thea, Odin's wife. She with her long blonde hair and a beautiful necklace and she disappears off into the underworld to get more bling, as as Venus does. More bling. Oh, yeah. Manny the Moon is a... Uh, he's a masculine goddess in the north because um, he 
wanders through the sun, wanders through the sky and gets eaten by a wolf because he gets bored and spies on people. So the wolf comes and bites his bum, so he moves away, and that's why he gets smaller. Okay. Um, the uh, Tia is Mars. So he's the god of actions, very similar to Mars in um, Greco-Roman. Loki is Saturn. He's the, um, he's the god of mischief. He's all structures. And Loki loves something as long as it works. As soon as it doesn't work, you'll set fire to it and wander off. Mm-hmm. And that's what I enjoy about this slightly different way of looking at um, stories and myth. Because Saturn's a very strong, stoic energy. Loki's a little much more playful energy. He'll, just, he'll turn himself into a horse to seduce a giant and then realize he's pregnant. Um, he's also a god that will tie a goat to his genitalia to make a goddess laugh. But he's also a god that will set fire to all of um, the worlds because it needs to change. Right. And, this, and all these are the evolutions. Um, Thor is Jupiter. Thor's massive, big. He's like Chris Hemsworth thing, except ginger. He's a big energy. Um, Urd is one of the Norns, and she's Uranus. And Yord, the god of the sea, is Neptune. Uh, Miramir, who's a bobbing head in the middle of Jotunheim, he's the god of um, mysteries and therefore is uh, Pluto. Pluto, yeah. So many lots of energies and fun stories that apply to the planets. And because humans think we're to be similarly, we have different energies and different stories that kind of match up. Mm-hmm. And so by knowing the stories of the ancient Norse, you can then build your runic star path in a way that is similar but not quite the same as the classical astrology. And I really love it. I've been immersed in this for freaking ages, which is why I can waffle about it so much. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. And so, you know, say someone's listening to this right now, they're like, okay, where do I start with this? Like, how do I learn more about this? And also, like, what's the benefit? Um, I think having lots of different ways to look at the... Sorry, start first question. What's the benefit? Having lots of different ways to look at the world, I think is useful. Um, when I was a nurse, we used to diagnose with CT scans, x-rays, we start with x-rays we start then we go ct scans if you need more information then you have an mri scan that will yes. um, to get more and um really astrology i think it's like an mri scan you put it on top of something else you've already got to get more data points to more ways of looking at it so some it's a, a different way of seeing the universe that you can then interpret the way you need to see things make it easier to get clarity on what you see oh, yeah. the way to start it is um Fortunately, you have to wait to the end of October for this book launch. Um, you, um, you can come to my website, richardgister.com, and there's a very, very brief bit on how to find your sun sign. And once you sun sign, you can then start looking at the myth and the story about your sun rune. And you knowing that if your sun rune is two hours, like yourself, you can have a look at what that rune means to you. Is it honor? Is it right action? Is it following laws? Is it doing what you feel is right? Or is it Winyo, like me? Is it um, sitting on the sofa eating biscuits on a Sunday evening? Or is it making sure you've got the biscuits in so you can sit there later on in the Sunday evening? It's um, it's interpreting how it works for you. And so, yeah, come to my website, find the basics there. But the book's, have, book's out soon, and there's a load of information there for you to interpret how it works best for you in the world. Because um, I think by having the skills oneself for yourself you can make informed decisions about how you want to interpret it opposed to putting all the onus on me i want you to read it and go oh that works oh no that doesn't work i'm not using that Ugh. so i think empowering yourself to make these decisions and make these interpretations is really important which is why the book structured as it is as a learning experience for you to become a runic astrologer and yes there's a lot of information there i have an excel sheet that does all my calculations for me because i can't hold it all up here Works, and I think it's a really fun way of doing things. And so say someone has struggled with, you know, Western astrology in the past, do you think this could be another option for them, a new way in? Um, I think so, because I've always struggled with Western astrology because I don't understand the symbols. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been stuck on the wall in front of me, so I know what they are. Because I've been, I've been immersed in this stuff for a long time. I still can't get the Western astrology symbols to then fit with my brain. Oh, you doing? That's interesting. Also, I've designed this to be a bit more masculine friendly in the world. Like lots of male clients, and they they can grasp the North stuff because it's cool. You can get a, you can have a man bun and you can wear furry shoulders and you have an axe and throw it at a log and stuff. 
yeah, the engaging boyfriends and husbands, I found yeah. that there is a bit more receptive to be brought into the world of the spiritual, the uh, metaphysical and the esoteric because, oh yeah, I can do this and not have to sit there and um, spray essential oils everywhere. I can do this and be like, yeah. <laughs> right. that is, that's awesome. And it's funny because um, you definitely are someone who is very in their masculine, but also very... Like every everyone that I know in our friends group, all the women love being around you because you you give them a soft, you've you've got a softness at the same time, you know. Even though you wear chainmail and have a sword and a you know, <laughs> all that stuff. So, um, you know, I think a lot of people who listen to this podcast, the You Can Heal Your Life podcast, just really want to, you know, live with more ease. Um, live in a more purposeful way. They want to, maybe you can call it raising your vibration. Like, how does that help us? So, rooms are another way of accessing this. And because, as you, as you, we said earlier, they're very simple to draw on things. I use to call in the energy I want all over the place. Like, each room, each wall in my house has been roomed with Sharpie before. Oh, it has? Under the paint? Under the paints, so they've got, they've got runes of home, which is Othala, runes of protection, runes of um, uh, safety and healing, which makes the our house very, very cosy. It's not; it doesn't make it very easy to get out of because you also want to stay in the nice warm thing. Ah, mm. also has runes of adventure and and strength and reliability, which is quite important. So all of these things, I bring my runes into what I'm doing in life. My wallet has runes of um, abundance and bringing that energy into there. So runes could be drawn to attract the energy you need. So that as I, I have them on, on, my, on my walls, on my fence, on my car, on my wallet, I have them on, on my watch strap to bring in the energies that I want to have around. And it's easy to have, for instance, a baby that's teething to have runes of endurance stuck on the post-it on the bottom of their crib so you're just putting it on like normal paper it doesn't have to be on anything fancy you, you don't have to write it in your own blood on the skin of your firstborn no you can just do it on a sharpie on a bit of paper with a sharpie I wouldn't scare them away come on <laughs> we're, not, we're not that we, we can do on anything you want um, a sharpie and um, pennies works really well for making your own room set just draw on, on that's really no or um, on a on a one cent coin, mm. whatever or whatever you have twenty four of. Um, if you want to draw a rune for helping your partner stop snoring, which I have many stuck to my bed because I snore, um, they are behind the headboard with um the runes for restful sleep, um, spelling that out to help me sleep restfully without snoring and help Lisa sleep restfully without me being really waking her up. Mm. Um. Uh, there are other rooms you can put on your bed. I'll leave that to your own imagination, what you want to put there. Okay. Or, um, which, one, which one that looks like a pair of wide legs. So uh, whatever runic energy you want in any situation can be adapted and placed there. You can buy them on, on the popsicle sticks, lollipop sticks, and stick them in your pocket. Mm. You can sit on the bonnet of your, um, on the um, on side of the bonnet of your car, or the under the hood of your car. You can um, put them on your co-worker's chair to make them stop making that freaking noise all day. Right. And they, so they can be aggressive, they can be defensive, they can be healing, they can be um, sickening. Because runes, runes aren't evil. Runes just do what you want them to do. Same way people aren't evil. People just do. Right. So there's no law of um, rule of, um, threefold return and stuff like that in the Viking stuff. It's, if you're a fool, you get punched in the face. Um, so use your energy, use your runes how you wish to use them, because this is how wor the world works. So if you want ill, bring the healing runes, bring lagus, bring uras, bring strength and healing in. If you want them to go away, bring the algis, bring um, thurizaz, make it spiky and make it unpleasant. If you want to nurture love and affection, perhaps you'll bring Feyu to bring that abundance into you. Perhaps use Peroth to bring a bit of lust and luck into you. So all these runes can bring different energies in, depending on how you interpret them. And that's one of the fun things. That's like bringing magic to your fingertips, really, isn't it? Yes. As I say, you carve them into a candle as well, like you said earlier. You can, uh, yeah, that's, I've definitely done that. 
and you can bring that energy how you want to bring it and how it works for you because it can be a, it's an additional tool it's not something that replaces mm -hmm. work with your oracle deck it will work with your bibliomancy it will work um carving it onto your ogham staves because they all they all work together these things because they're not um exclusionary because we know that even back in the his ancient history there's a a priestess found in sweden who had a buddha a christ figure um and an odin statue buried with her so she she was she was all over this stuff so yeah i've got all this thanks all in three nice big um power there for me thank you very much so these runes work with any any denomination which is why they work really well with kundalini as well so i know you're big into the the golden yeah. the golden um path and by bringing the runes into your practice you can look at how you want to manifest how you which practice you're doing that day you can also have that rune written in front of you during a meditation if you're doing a chakra then you can bring that energy to to clean your arc line in with lagoos a cleaning those are doing your um some that show it clear yeah uh, um you can bring your abundance in with your fayu so yeah. these rooms work with all the different modalities because they're not partisan they just bring energy got it and i think um what's really fun is just like the accessibility the the ease like you can try a little bit you know say for example one of your family members is about to do their driving test you know you can get them a rune for their car success and victory yeah yeah um if someone's a little bit worried you can give them one for protection and it can be you know just a little post it in their wallet but it's it's bringing big intention and and a lot of magic and kind of helping us see um the mystery of life more completely by bringing the intention the focus to your every life everyday life helps you see and feel and connect to the world we're experiencing and living in right now not just on the meta on, on the physical but on the metaphysical and everything else that goes around it so i think from here a really good thing would be um just to remind people where they can find you um i think we should also acknowledge that if someone's listening to this and they are a little bit spiritual and they'd love their um you know partner to get interested in something this and it might be a man you know like this could be a really good starting place for them as well um and maybe a few other tips that you've got for people to kind of bring more rune magic and in, uh, into their life so i think um first place to to work with what i'm doing um rooms made easy um the house that's a great book um it's designed to be used as a open up find the bit you need and move on um i've also got a runes made easy course coming out in a couple of weeks with hay house so that'd be on taking you um so you'll be able to access that using your subscription um runes Rink astrology is out at the end of october so um that's going to be lots of fun and uh, you, there's a lot of freebies if you head over to my website richardlister.com and which is also where you can access me to work with me and do all other fun runic based stuff but to get with runes the basic thing is get yourself 24 somethings bits of paper coins um pebbles and write down each rune and play with them because that's the way i feel the best way to get into this it's play it's not sacred it's just life and reach into that pouch and grab the rune you you draw and see what it says brilliant uh this has been such an exciting thing you know i was going to say just before we go um I think making runes could also be a super family orientated experience, you know. I've got a friend who um, made some with her daughter, her son, who's um, 18 months old, and there's pictures of her making her runes and then baby sticking them in his face, making them feel they're big enough so he can't swallow them. But, um, <laughs> and that's family magic. So they're blessed by mama and they're blessed by baby and they're blessed by daddy when they cut down the tree and all this kind of magic stuff. Boo. This has been so cool. Thank you so much for coming on and telling us all about runes. So this has been Richard Lister with your boy Kyle Gray as part of the You Can Heal Your Life uh, podcast. Thank you for being with us. Have a good spot. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.